All right, so we just did that video about talking about bento extraction, but I realized that I didn't actually show you how to extract the bento itself. So let's do a quick run through and extract that bento. So I'm going to um, show you my screen, and I'm going to find somebody who is bento. I'm not going to use, uh, let's see that guy, he's got a head. So let's use the guy with the devil head as an example. As you see, he has a bento face and bento hands, but we just want his head. So I'm going to right-click on the guy. And, of course, Darkstorm is going to go bananas, but it's all right. So just right-click, Darkstorm, Export. And you see that his head. So we're going to download the textures because we can. Hit Export. And then we're going to save it to my desktop real quick. And I'm just going to save it as BJD Head. Go. And to make sure that we definitely got the textures, we're going to also do the Save As save as colada and we get all his face textures that are in there that's a lot of textures <laughs> sorry pjt hid text and hit that wait for them to save okay so that's all of them, and we're going to close Darkstorm because, uh, like before, we can't have Darkstorm running. Running, <laughs> we can't have Darkstorm running while we do the um, program. So hang on one second. Okay, so we are back here. Let me close this and this. And as you see, it's got the new <laughs> poogie in the background. <laughs> all right, so this is the new one. It tells your hair is meshes by Gina. Um, the version number and they have a lot more updates that I actually do kind of like but I also found this program the new update just a little side note although this program is indeed amazing and it did have a bunch of updates that I do appreciate one of them is the unique material for each face button and it overwrite existing day file which will let you you know create a, if you already ran a, a XML through this and it's not give you that shortcut created to that one it's just going to overwrite it and create the mesh again um, the only thing I don't like about this program is that not just with the bento stuff but with regular mesh too it has a problem showing up inside of blender where um, the bones and stuff just don't show up as well as the vertex groups and everything else it's like it just does not like Blender at all. Now this isn't just limited to Blender. I tried it in Cinema 4D um, and Maya as well. Now granted I don't like Maya but I thought maybe if it can load up I can export it as something else that works in Blender but no it just doesn't work. So this program is pretty much used, um, this version of the program is pretty much used to export and then import right back into Second Life. So let me go and uh, open up the XML, which, you know what, now thinking about it, I have no idea where I saved it. Oh, my desktop. <laughs> All right, so we have it exported, and I'm going to create the day. Cool. All right, so it does create a folder of all this stuff, and I'm going to open up that file location. Here it is. Don't look at all my extracted junk. And I'm going to show you what I was talking about. So I'm just going to copy its location. And I'm going to open up a copy of Blender real quick. And import it in. And you see, we get the guy's head. And there's a skeleton stem here. But when we go into the vertex groups... See, there's no vertex groups, no anything in there. And when I tried to uh, shift it over into, like, create an uh, Avastar skeleton. Now, I did this in uh, Avastar 2.0 when there was a skeleton. Uh, what skeleton is that? The extended one, the bento skeleton. And I tried transferring it over. Still, nothing. So, um... I don't know. I don't get it. I don't understand it. I guess it's going to take a little bit more research, but yeah, that. So we have the head. The head is here. It's all assembled, which is great. So I guess you can use it for painting. Um, I'm not sure how the UVs are on this. So I'm look at it real quick. The UV state. So I guess if you wanted to paint onto it directly, you could. So anyway, let's uh, see how it imports back in a second line. So I'm going to go over here to Second Life. 
and somebody's resin tentacles. Okay, okay. Yeah, upload a mesh. Oh, wait, that's the dead one. Oops, I crashed. <laughs> Damn, tentacle man. All right, let me go and figure that one out, and then I'll come back. Okay, sorry about that. That took a lot longer than I expected. So we have um this. I'm gonna upload the bento thing we extracted. Should be here on my desktop. I'm so sorry for the hiccups. It's this new medicine I got. It's like the worst. <laughs> so we're gonna do this and do that, and then you see it comes in that block. I think that's a, that's teeth, isn't it? <laughs> All right, so I'm going to upload this real quick on the main grid because I love y'all like that. <laughs> All right, so we're going to upload it. I'm going to close this. And let's see. Add in. And you see? Now I got the head. It's there. And then I'm going to try to see if I can play this animation. You see, this is a bento mouth talking. Blop, blop. So it does indeed work, but it only works when you extract it and put it back in. Doesn't really work anywhere else. So if that's what you're looking for, then by golly, just follow this tutorial, and then you will be, um, you know, doing the thing too. So that's it for me. Hopefully this helped you out, and you can stop asking me how to extract bento mesh. That's how you do it. <laughs> All right, guys. I'll see you later. Have a good day, and good luck on your project.